All right, so when it comes to shaping the cavatelli, you just want to make sure at this point you're really not adding to, not really adding flour back to it. You're not adding any semolina. You're just going to kind of, you want to keep it this nice supple texture that you've created using the ricotta. So now I'm just going to slice off a long piece and put the extra inside or throw a rag over it or something. You just, you don't want it to dry out and get that film. Now just, we're going to roll this out into a nice dough rope, right? Just that Play-Doh snake used to make as a kid and just roll that out long ways. And just, if you could see that I'm using my fingers and I'm using my thumbs and you're doing this to keep equal pressure as you're going all the way down. And I like to do stuff on a wooden board as well because that also pulls off additional moisture and it, it kind of helps with the, the process of working with your, your dough. Now here I'm just doubling it over. That's just going to save a little extra time when we go to cut everything up. That's really all this is doing. Uh, once I get everything side by side, I'm going to get a little extra semolina or flour if that's what you have and just do a light dusting, nothing too crazy. But then what you really can't see here on the back side is that I'm using my finger as a guide to kind of decide how how wide or how long I want the cavatelli to be. And that way I'm getting a somewhat consistent uh, size in the cavatelli. So I'm not weighing it. If you want to weigh the individual cavatelli, you can, but not necessary because these are going to float when they're done any ready. Now we're going to go ahead and start shaping them. So you can see here when I'm rolling here, I'm applying a little bit of pressure, nothing crazy, but enough pressure to get the grooves in as I roll it down and then just allowing it to fall naturally off the board. And really the pressure that you apply here is going to be based on the amount of moisture that you have in your cavatelli. So if it's super soft, less pressure, obviously. Now I'm just going to do a light dusting real quick of some leaner flour or both if that's what you have and just going to keep them from sticking together. Um, and that's definitely, that's important that you do that because if you forget that process, because these are, this is such a delicate recipe and there's a higher ricotta content, um, they will start to stick together. So don't waste all your work, just make sure you keep them nice and coated. Now, if you don't have a cavatelli board or a gnocchi board where you can find them, you know, many different places, anything you have that has grooves in it's going to work. Say you can use a fork and that's, you can lay the fork flat or you can lay it where it's kind of bowed up and you can use either side of it. So once you are able to do it on the wooden board, doing it across a, uh, a fork or even if you get a cheese grater, one that you're able to flip on both sides and use the side that's raised and go against, uh, excuse me, not against, go with the grooves of the cheese grater side that's raised up and you're going to get a really cool texture and then it's just kind of looking around to see what you have that you can play with. Now just go ahead and grab a sheet tray and we're going to scoop up the cavatelli that's been lightly coated with some leaner flour and go ahead and toss that on and we want to make sure they're not, not evenly spaced but you don't want to overcrowd them. Um, it's not a really big deal if they do. They're just going to stick. You're going to snap them off with, when you go to stack them on top of each other in another container which after about 10 minutes of being in the freezer, these suckers are going to be frozen, solid, and ready to repackage, however you want to package. And you can keep them in the freezer. I'm going to say up to six months. I, I, they would never last that long in our freezer, but they're going to last you a pretty good amount of time. All right, so now it's time to cook this pasta. You get a, get a bigger pot. Don't get something small. You want to make sure that the pasta has enough room to cook. It's not going to be sitting on top of each other because if you put it in a smaller pot, you're going to come out with a big, starchy, clumpy mess. Again, this pasta is delicate. It's made with more ricotta cheese than most cavatelli, and you just you want to make sure that everything has enough room to cook. So once we get to a rapid boil, rolling boil, crank that heat all the way up. You want to see that water just moving violently. And then you want to have your, your stainless steel pan off to the side where you see in this video. I didn't have the sauce cooked today. This is some sauce from the other night. So what I did was I took it out. The sauce is still cold. I tossed a little bit into the mixing pan because when I'm finished with the pasta, it's going to go straight into the mixing pan with the sauce. I'm going to coat it. And even though the sauce is cold now, the temperature is going to come up and it's going to be the perfect temperature to eat. So let's go ahead and salt the water first now that we have our spider and everything ready. Again, you want to salt the water to a taste of the ocean. So that is subjective. It's going to be what you want. Uh, I would not recommend cooking this in unsalted water because you end up leaching out the salt and some of the other flavors that are in your, your pasta. And we want to kind of protect that the best we can. Uh, so here we have the pasta. It is frozen solid. The cavatelli is going to go in to this hot water salt bath and we're going to give it a little stir just to make sure nothing is sticking and now we wait. Now since we do have an intense rapid boil going on here sometimes it's going to be difficult to see when the cavatelli is actually floating and ready to take out of the pot so if you get to the point where the cavatelli is coming to the surface and then going back down obviously that could be because of the rolling boil or that could be because they're ready so if you're not quite sure all you want to do is just grab the edge of the pot when 
they start to kind of bump up to the top and then roll back to the bottom, just grab the edge of the pot, push it slightly over just to the side of your burner, and this is going to keep you from having to readjust the heat constantly. When the water calms down, if they're not floated to the top yet, just push it right back onto the burner. So now that we've pushed it off again, we can see that the cavatelli is floating. So I'm just going to get my stainless steel mixing bowl here that has the cold sauce in it. I'm going to scoop that cavatelli right out, put it right in. I'm going to just check the bottom and make sure nothing's stuck, which it's not because I gave it a good stir at the beginning. Um, normally, I would just take and toss this regular just like this right here. However, since the sauce is cold, it's not going to move as freely. So I give it a quick stir with the wooden spoon. Then I'll go back in when I'm finished and do a little, a few tosses. Now would be a good time if you did have an extra, a little bit of fresh basil, uh, anything like that you want to toss back on. After we plate it up, you would just go ahead and toss that fresh basil, any Parmesan Reggiano that you have, and just get after it. I mean, I'm telling you, eat this right now. You can put it in the refrigerator and save it, but I mean, come on. Look at this dish right here. You can practically smell and taste the magical goodness in this dish. I hope you're able to learn a little bit on shaping and cooking your cavatelli. Again, my name is Jason with Chef Style Boston. I'm a private chef here in Boston, Massachusetts, cooking it up Southern Gent flavor style. So hit us up at chefstyleboston.com if you want to see what else we offer, or you can shoot me an email, please, at chefstyleboston at chefstyleboston.com. If you would like to get something private set up through Zoom or if you're local, we can do it local as well. Cheers, guys.